Hey there, Algebra. We're getting down to the final few lectures of this year before we do some other interesting things. Um, so in this one, we're going to look at uh, special products, fact factoring special products. And, and of course, you're going to recall that when we, we talk about special products, we're talking about perfect squares and the difference of two squares. And so that's what we're going to do here today. So as a little reminder, a trinomial is a perfect square if the first and last terms are perfect squares, number one, and number two, the middle term is two times a factor of the first and a factor of the uh, third term. And again, this is like the uh, a squared plus 2ab plus b squared, right? And that's what we're trying to do is to see if this has that form, um, because if it does, when we start identifying these right off the bat, you're like, oh, wait a minute the difference of squares. And so again, a squared plus 2ab plus b squared is a plus b squared. It might look like, like this, factored out. a squared minus 2ab plus b squared would look like that, right? That's also a perfect square, and this would be an example of that. <clears throat> so now the real question is, hey, recognizing it and then factoring it. And really when we factor it, it's one binomial raised to the second power. For example, determine whether each trinomial is a perfect square. If so, factor it. Hey, 9x squared, that's a perfect square, 3x. 64, that's a perfect square, that's just 8. But is the middle 2 times one factor of this and one factor of this? Well, when we actually go for it and, and play it out, we find 2 times 3x times 8. Wait a minute. 2 times 3x is 6x. 6x times 8 is 48x. That is definitely not negative 15x. So therefore, this example is not a perfect square. So we're not going to factor that any further. The point was, if you saw that these three... Um, pieces multiplied together to be the central piece. Aha! Now you've got a perfect square. I think you'll get a better sense of it on when you actually do it. So take a look here. x squared is a perfect square. It's x. 9 is a perfect square. It's 3. If I multiply that by 2, 2 times x times 3. Oh yeah, that is 6x. Therefore, I have a I have a perfect square. x plus 3 squared. And where does that come from? Well, let's go backwards. If I factor this out, x and x, uh, this sign here is positive, which means it has the same sign. This sign here is also positive, which means they're both positive. And 3 and 3, oh yeah, right? If I if I foil that back out, you'll see that that does indeed um, work out to uh, this product here, or this trinomial. All right, now your mission, try the next four problems and see how it goes. When we're all said and done, um, you'll be able to check your answers and, and see how you did. The next thing we need to do is like a real life application and a lot of area functions and problems that you're going to study in geometry. Um, are, are the product of two binomials, okay? So in this example, a square piece of cloth uh, needs to be cut in order to make a tablecloth. The area needed is that uh, expression right here. The dimensions of the cloth are in the form c, x, minus d, where c and d are whole numbers. Interesting. Okay, but I also know it's a square, right? So one side times the other side, base times height, should equal that whole thing there. Find an expression for the perimeter of the cloth. Okay? Find the perimeter when x is 11 inches. So here's the idea. Can I factor this? 16x squared, well, that would be 4x. And 9 would be 3 and if I multiplied that by 2, oh wait, 2 
times 4x is 8x. 8x times 3 is 24x. That works. Okay, so literally, this term is, if I factor this out, if I take 16x squared minus 24x plus 9, I can factor this out. I can say, hey, all right, uh, 4x, 4x. This means they have the same sign. This means both of those signs are negative. Minus 3, minus 3. All right, 4x minus 3 squared. Sweet, I factored it. In fact, I know that each side length is 4x minus 3. So my side is equal to 4x minus 3. Now, the question is, it says find an expression for the perimeter of the cloth. Well, the perimeter is the length all the way around, and in this case, I know it's a square. So I add up the four sides. So here it is. Well, wait a minute. The perimeter is equal to 4 times 4x minus 3. Now, I don't actually have to multiply that. I don't have to distribute that 4 right now because it's in factored form. I factored out a 4. I factored out a 4. If you want to distribute that 4, you can do it. You're going to get the same setup. So in this case, I'll just do like this. And we get 16x minus 12. Okay, it's not in factored form, but it's one less thing to deal with. Now it says, find the perimeter when x is 11. Okay, so now I'm going to plug 11 in for x. In fact, I'm going to do it here. I'm going to do 4 times 11 minus 3 times 4. 4 times 11 is 44. Minus 3 is 41. And uh, 4 times 41 is equal to... Four. Can I do the math in my head? I'm not going to carry anything. Uh, one sixty-four. Now the question is, what units am I in? I'm going to go back to my original problem. It says I'm in inches, so the perimeter is 164 inches. Excellent. Now, you try. Okay, you've tried that problem, you've paused the video, welcome back. The next thing uh, we need to talk about is the difference of squares. And of course, the difference of squares is you take a perfect square and subtract another perfect square from it. Well, the product um, that made this happen in many cases is a plus b times a minus b. And so a similar uh, rule here, a difference of two squares is, there's two terms, one is subtracted from the other. Okay like that. Both terms are perfect squares. So this one's really easy to identify. There's subtracted and there's no middle and they're both perfect squares. So here um, they give you a formula and a nice little example and just a little reading math. Recognize a difference of two squares. The coefficients of variable terms are perfect squares. Powers on variable terms are even and constants are perfect squares. Now I'm just going to throw this out here right now because some of you might be like, wait a minute, what are my perfect squares? Let's review. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, we have no 10. Let's do 11, right? And so again, if I square these values, 1 squared is 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, 81, 100, 121, etc. It's really helpful if you have your times tables down really well. All right, so hey, in this example, determine whether each binomial is a difference of two squares. If so, factor it. Uh, piece, wait, wait a minute. This is the difference, and 9 is a perfect square. Q4, Q is to an even power, so I can do that. P is to an even power, 
but the three, no way, Jose, since three, uh, this three here, three P squared is not a perfect square. It is not the difference of two squares. If I try another problem here, x to the fourth, okay, that's x to an even power, and I've got minus, good, 25 y to the sixth. Well, wait a minute, that's just five. The square root of 25 y to the sixth is just five y to the third. Wait a minute, I totally can do that. And yeah, if you look at the example here, you see, right, the difference of these two squares are these two terms, x squared plus 5y to the third times x squared minus 5y to the third. And so, yeah, that's true, and that's how you play this game. All right, now it's your turn. In fact, that's all there is in this lesson. It's, it's recognizing um, uh, perfect squares and difference of squares. So try these remaining five problems. Check your answers on the next page once you've completed them. And then, drum roll, there's the solutions. You, again, you can pause me, move me, rewind me, do whatever you need to do. And your assignment uh, to do these problems, page 494, 14 to 29, skip multiples of three. If you want to check off your worksheet with me first, just bust it out. Uh, that is the way to do it. Again, practice makes perfect. Don't make this homework. Get some of it done now, or if you need to, um, do some of it in uh, down at the middle school.